hopefully everybody knows who client success is. Uh, we are not a consulting firm. We are not a training and leadership development firm. We are actually a software company. Client success builds software for customer success teams and uh, post initial sales teams uh, to be able to help drive the relationship from new customers all the way through renewals, from onboarding to driving engagement, adoption, and and gr and developing uh, great customer health to helping to make sure that you retain and grow those customers. Uh, we have an awesome solution, so if you haven't seen it, um, let us know. We'd love to introduce you. We, we're grateful for all of our customers on the call. Uh, so stoked and grateful for your uh, for, for the partnership, and we'd love to introduce the rest of you to our platform if you haven't seen it before. Just go to clientsuccess.com or reach out to Christy or myself, and we'll connect you with one of our awesome sales, um, sales team members or members of our team to, to introduce you to our platform. All right. Um, this has been a great month of webinars. Christie's brought some awesome, awesome content. So the first one in February it was designing a success probability score to predict customer health. Uh, Feb on 14th, we uh, she delivered deploying a customer success platform. How to how to deploy a platform like ours? Last week it was moving to a pooled customer success model, and there was a lot of excitement and engagement there. Today is a really exciting. Um, uh, topic around um, launching community. We'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, Christy will share her own personal experience recently as we've launched our community and she's led that strategic initiatives. All of these boot camps should be on our website. So if you missed any over the last three weeks, go to our website and take a look at them. You'll love each, each of them and I, I'm confident they'll help you um, as, a, as a leader. Um, so with that, without further ado, I want to bring on Christy Falcheruso and uh, introduce her. Again, my name is Dave Blake. I'm the founder and CEO of Client Success. So stoked to be here with Christy, our Chief Customer uh, Officer here at Client Success. Christy, how you doing? I'm great. I'm sad though. This is our last one. I feel like these oh. series go so fast. It's like we're planning, we're planning, and then all of a sudden we're in the last session. <laughs> I know. I know. It is sad. We, we, it will be a couple more months before we bring you another series, but uh, but this one's an awesome one. I'm so excited to, to, to even myself to sit back and listen um, because I think this is, Christy, has been a labor of love for you for several months now as you've uh, embarked in launching our community, and I, I know you're excited to share some of your learnings. Yeah, absolutely. This is, um, you know, this is something obviously we've been working on for months. Uh, I've put a lot of time and effort and blood, sweat and tears into getting our community platform up and running. And we're super excited to actually be rolling this out to our customers in our first kind of beta group this week. And so love to just tackle this topic head on, share all of our learnings, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, but really hope that it helps other customer success leaders understand the opportunity for their customers by, by taking on initiatives like this. All right. Well, let's do this. Actually, we didn't prepare a poll, but do you mind if I ask a, a question to the group? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. So on the group, hit it, hit us up in chat. How many of you are looking at um, launching some kind of community initiative this year in 2023 or early 2024? If you did, raise your hand or, 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 or give us a shout out in chat. And that will give us a sense. So we've got a lot, some that just launched and some that are that are planning to launch or revamp. Um, so hopefully uh, this will be a good ex good uh, experience. I'm confident it will um, to, to share share um, to hear Christy's uh, you know experience and best practices that we've learned over the, over this experience. And Christy, I will uh, I will turn it over to you and and man the man the chat and Q and A behind the scenes. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. And I'm, I'm kind of like watching a flurry of comments come into the chat. It's so exciting to hear and see so many of you interested in either tackling this initiative this year or for those of you who started last year, it's amazing. Um, and so I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts and, and watch your comments as we go through today's presentation. Um, but this is, like I said, something that has been near and dear to my heart. Uh, for the past couple months, uh, I've got the privilege of leading this initiative here at Client Success. And like I said, today is all about my journey. Um, and so just kind of like I always share practical, tactical advice to each of you and help you kind of embark similar um, initiatives 
in your own companies, um, I want to talk a little bit about the journey here at Client Success and how we went about launching our community platform for customers. So really excited to get started. Let's dive right in. All right. So one thing I, I do want to just call out is it, this might not be obvious to everyone because when I think we hear the term community, we automatically like our heads kind of go to the formality of a community, right? This like deploying a, a software, a platform to facilitate community. And so what I want to just be very clear about, and we tackled this, um, I don't know if it was last boot camp or two boot camps ago, how to launch uh, or start a community initiative without a platform, right? So in that session, I gave a ton of advice on little initiatives and things that you could do to start bringing your customers together through a community lens without having a formal platform deployed. This will take that and anchor it all around the actual platform. And so what I do want to just make sure we're, we're aligned on is you don't need a community platform to initiate community initiatives, but it can make all the difference. And so that's what we've learned here at Client Success, right? We've we've done a lot to kind of bring our customers together and feed them through initiatives like this boot camp and others that we do uh, privately for our customer base. But what we wanted to do was take it to the next level. And that next level for us was actually deploying a formal platform to facilitate connections and content and information, learnings, help build relationships. And so we're really excited to dive right in. So what I want to start with is how we started thinking about our, our community platform and this entire initiative. And what I've outlined for you is an aggressive timeline um, over the past three months, how we took on this program of building our community and formally deploying a platform. Now, just to give you guys our rough timeline, right? I, I started on this probably mid, mid December, uh, I started with a lot of conversations and we'll kind of walk through my timeline, but we're getting to a place now we're at the end of February, uh, early March, right? Where we're actually rolling out to our customers. So we actually got to the place where we went through this entire process in almost less than 90 days, which can be aggressive for some, right? Depending on your resources and your bandwidth and other competing initiatives, um, it might take longer than this. So I don't want my timeline to influence how you're thinking about it, um, but this was something that was a priority for us, for my team, for our customers. And so for us, um, obviously I accelerated it. We made sure that we got something that we could roll out in Q1. So what I want to just kind of start with is how we got to this place and even what are the plans moving beyond our initial launch. So the first couple of weeks of this really started with us defining our strategy, right? We can't jump into a huge initiative, especially one that, that costs money and that's going to impact our customers without having a clear strategy. And so that was one of the first things that we had to think about, right, is if we were going to go this route and make this investment from, you know, a cost, a resources, a human capital standpoint, we had to be very clear on what its intention was and, and what the value would be to our customers if we went this way. Now, the other thing we had to do is I had to get buy-in, right? Um, so while Dave is usually always a supporter of all of the wacky ideas that I bring to the table, um, you know, Dave's not the only person in our leadership team. And so it was really critical that I use our December leadership offsite to make sure that all of the cross-functional leaders in our business were bought into this because Community is a company-wide initiative, just like customer success should be. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that everyone understood how their teams would be expected to contribute and help support it, but then also the value to help each team, each member of our company understand how this would help them individually and with our business objectives, because it really, it truly will help everyone. The next thing we have to do is go through our vendor selection process. Um, there are a ton of really fantastic tools out there, all varying degrees of functionality and cost, um, but we had to go through a process here to make sure that we were selecting the platform that would best meet our needs. I'm going to walk you guys through all of this. Um, then we had to figure out the operational planning. This was also really important. This actually is where we had to kind of put pen to paper and say, if we're going to do this, what does this entire process look like? What's the time? What's the resources? Who's going to be involved? And so we had to map that all out really tactically so that we could set expectations for everyone in our business and also uh, with our customers so that they knew what to expect uh, and what this would look like. 
Um, and then we have to design our framework, right? So ultimately, if we deployed this and we built this out, what does this look like? How does this integrate into our strategy from a customer success standpoint, from a sales standpoint, from a marketing, from a product? And so building the framework of what successful community will look like at client success. So those were the initial initiatives that I kicked off with. Um, and like I said, we moved very quickly through these. We're able to get buy-in. Um, I think for our team across client success, not just in the CX org, it was a no-brainer. Right, we knew that there is so much value that everyone in our business and the broader client success community, from like our, our customers, our end users, that they would get from this. So we were able to move through those initial steps pretty quickly. Now I will say, um, this was my first time ever building community. Um, even in organizations where I had a little bit of involvement, I never owned it. Um, and so I always, you know, I'm always grateful to Dave to give me new opportunities as a leader to learn and take something new on, because this was a first for me. And so I'm going to share with you a lot of my learnings and some of the things that tripped us up, but we're really excited to, to kind of get to this place of build and launch. So over the past, I would say six, six weeks or so, um, right, we came off of the holidays, and that was really where we were heads down. So build and launch for us uh, over the past couple of weeks has looked like platform implementation, right? So once we selected what platform we were gonna go with, it was really my responsibility to make sure that we were getting that platform set up, configured and built out the right way so that our customers would be able to use it effectively. The second area of focus for us was around migrations um, and really some integrations there as well. So there are certain things that we are migrating over to our community platform. For example, one is our knowledge base. Um, so historically we had used Zendesk for our knowledge base platform. And we have actually now, we're in the process of deprecating that and migrating our knowledge base over to the community, right? So having a really integrated flow to help our customers get the information that they need, not only from our, our knowledge base, but having federated search so they could search our community content as well as that knowledge base. Um, also, we had historically uh, used a different uh, solution for um, product feedback, right? Like ideation, so your idea board. We've actually now implemented that into our community as well. So customers who have awesome ideas about new innovation for our platform, things that they need, want to see, um, this now lives in our community as well, which facilitates our customers really communicating with product and, and being able to share all their ideas, but then also our product team being able to communicate directly with the our customer base through the community. We had to figure out how we're going to be measuring this. Um, and so we had to think through what are the important KPIs? How would we build this out and think about like, okay, all the points of success, right? What did an MVP look for us, look like for us, right? So what is the first iteration, the first deployment of our community platform? How do we how do we need to have that set up in order for this to be a success out of the gate? And then what would the iterations look like? We also had to create some governance documents, right? Community is not just about building a platform and then like setting it loose. Um, many companies actually invest in having a community management team. Uh, some folks have one person, others have an army of people, right? If you think about the Salesforce community is probably like one of the largest SaaS communities out there, um, right? I think it's called Trailblazer. Like you have a, a team of people who manage that effectively. Um, so we had to create some governance documentation that would allow us to understand internally, how are we going to manage this, right? What are the roles of each person? How would we engage? But also from a customer standpoint, right? What were the expectations we had for them as they're leveraging our community? And then we prepared for our, our soft launch, uh, which obviously we're going to be moving to full. So for us, soft launch is this week. Um, and then our full launch, we're targeting for March 20th. Now, beyond this, it's all about how do we continue to iterate on this? Like most software, it's not set it and forget it, right? You never deploy a software and then just hope it does whatever it needs to do in perpetuity. You likely have to go back, iterate, make changes, take feedback and work with that. So as we think about the V2 of our deployment, it's about expansion of content, right? How can we see, um, use things like our search that's in the platform, how do we use that to understand what are our customers looking for? What do they need? How do we build out and expand on the content that is probably being most searched for? Or how do we train and enable people that might be searching for the same things? So expansion of content will be a big part of our V2. 
identifying top contributors. Um, a lot of communities uh, include some kind of gamification, right, through badges, award programs, uh, contributor programs, things like that. And so we're going to want to figure out who are our customers who are really adopting the community well and successfully, who are those top contributors, and then how can we reward, celebrate, and leverage them more effectively? Platform optimization. I will say, as we talk through this, I'll, I'll share with you what platform we went with, um, but how do we continue to look at their add-ons and additional modules so we can continue to enhance the experience? There were some things that we said, okay, out the gate, we want to be able to have certain modules, certain functionality, and certain features. But we knew that, you know, as we move further through this process, we'll want to continue to enhance and build on that. So this was something that's really important for us. Product integrations. Um, as we think about this, it's not just integrations with how do we want to put data into the community, but then how do we take the learning and insights out of the community and pump that into other tools that we have to increase visibility and enhance data democratization within our business. And then lastly is about metric management. So we wanna make sure that we've got a great handle on understanding how our users are engaging with the platform and that we're paying attention to that on an ongoing basis so we can continue to optimize and enhance that because this is a program like any other and we need to make sure that we have a good handle on what's successful and what that success looks like and then how do we continue to enhance that over time. So hopefully this gives you a, a rough estimate of kind of what the past couple of weeks have looked like for us, and then also how we're thinking about this as we move into the future. Now, like I said, we'll continue to iterate on this. I don't intend for this to be the last version of our roadmap, um, but definitely as we are in early stages here, this is how we're thinking about it. So I wanna make sure that I'm sharing with you our community strategy. So like I said, this was a no-brainer uh, when we brought this to the leadership team, when we got buy-in from all of the members of uh, client success, because that is important also. We want everyone to feel like they're supporting initiatives, especially if they're going to be things that they're going to need to participate in. So the first thing we focused on was scale. Now, for many of you, um, perhaps you're navigating some tough times where you have less resources. And I'm really trying to get us all to stop saying, let's do more with less. Um, it's actually kind of impossible to do more with less, but you can do things differently and have a great impact. And so for us, this is where community came in. We know that we needed to connect with our customers more regularly. We needed to enhance their access to content and ideas and help them connect with one another. So for us, this facilitated a strong one-to-many approach where we're able as a customer success team and as an organization to engage with our customers to ensure their long-term success with client success. So scale was a big focus for us. The second area of our strategy that we focused on was enablement. We know that our customers, some of them, I mean, still blow me away with how they're using client success. And every day I'm like, oh, that's so cool. We need to do that too. But there also is a lot of our customers, right? Depending on where they are in their stage, they haven't gotten to a place where maybe they're adopting everything just yet. And that means that enablement, that education, that continuous learning needs to continue and we need to be driving that forward. Now, of course, our CSMs can very easily do training sessions and enablement and that's great, but it doesn't always scale. And it also limits the ideation from all of our cross-functional resources, right? If we've got a CSM who's been working with a book of business for, let's say, two years, that's their book of business. It probably doesn't change tremendously, which means those are the use cases they have visibility into. Those are the conversations that they've been having. Well, I want to be able to leverage each of our CSM's expertise and their knowledge and make sure that we're helping our customers understand what is possible with client success. The third thing is about connections. Just like each of you, and we've seen over the years, I can't believe it, we're saying that we've been doing this program now for two years almost, people want to connect with one another. Well, one of the things that we hear so often from our customers is, hey, we'd love to hear from other customers who are doing things similarly, or other customers who look like us, or are having the same problems, or heck, just to formulate relationships, right? We know that the best, our best assets are our networks, and our customers want to build that with like-minded leaders who are in similar situations, doing similar work. And so it's so critical for us to facilitate 
those connections and help foster those relationships. And the last part of our strategy was all about growth. Now, growth is not something that we think about internally, right? This doesn't happen in a, in a vacuum where we just think about our own growth at client success. I think the most successful companies think about it, if we can help our customers grow, then as a mutual benefit to the partnership, we'll grow together. And so we want to help our customers grow. We want to help make this partnership between our customers and client success mutually beneficial and make sure that we're all benefiting from these partnerships. And so this was our strategy. This is how we broke it down. And like I said, for us, this was a no-brainer. Every single leader in our business understood the value of each of these strategic pillars and was really, really excited to get on board with this. So if you haven't launched your community yet and you're thinking through, well, what are the strategic initiatives that this would help facilitate? Maybe it's these four, maybe it's four different ones and that's cool too. But these were the four things that made it crystal clear that this was an initiative we needed to take on and we needed to take on now. Oh, I just keep scrolling a little aggressively today. Um, so the next thing I want to share with you guys is our platform selection. Now, trust me when I say this is not the only things that we evaluated or considered, but I think it's important to just highlight some of those. And so obviously I didn't, I didn't call out the products we didn't move forward with. I am simply highlighting that as a net net here, we ended up going with higher logic vanilla forums as our platform selection. And this is something you're all going to have to go through. And if any of you have bought software before in your professional careers or have been part of a buying cycle, hopefully when you do that, you are very methodical and thoughtful about what it is that you need in order to ensure that the software you have is going to help you guys achieve your initiatives. So for us, when we went through this process, we had to think about, okay, what were the core elements of a software that we're gonna help facilitate the community that we envisioned for our customers. So to start off, it was very basic, right? We needed key functionality. When we thought about that, it was like, okay, well, what do you see in a community, right? We're all parts of different communities. So obviously discussions and forums and commenting and profiles and, and all of, and like badges and gamification and all like just the key functionality, right? Like this is like, community platform one on 101. Um, and you'll see here, they're all of the platforms that we looked at all offered this, you know, obviously there's varying degrees of, of what each of these things does and how they do it. Those are the things that make each platform special and unique. Um, but for us, we kind of drilled it down to the basics. Um, we're not at a place right now where we need super, super advanced technology and it needs to have every bell and every whistle and do all of the things. We need to make sure at its core though, that our customers would be able to use it to do the things we envisioned them doing. The second thing we had to think of was integrations. Listen, most companies right now are thinking very thoughtfully about cost, right? And so one of the things that we had to think about is, is there, is there cost savings here if we go with a particular solution that will help us save money through other products? And so this was this was important for us at Client Success. So, you know, the selection that we made, Higher Logic, right? We did want to move our knowledge base into community. We did want to move ideation into community. We do want to make sure that the community can integrate with Client Success, that we can pull all of the learnings and metrics into our own platform, right? So these are things that were interesting to us. And so we had to think through those. Um, being able to port this data into our own CRM, right? And whether that be for you, maybe Salesforce or HubSpot or some other, right? Integrations were key. We needed to make sure that they had the ability to help us pump data in and out appropriately. The third thing here was security. I will say that the platforms that we looked at all had some great security functionality, things that kind of met our initial needs. Um, a big one for us was a single sign-on. Our community, at least initially, is going to be customer only. Um, a lot of folks as you're building communities are building communities for your entire industry. And that's that's all well and good. Um, for us at Client Success, we really did want to target our customers and creating a safe place for them to share, ideate, and to build and foster relationships that were exclusive to our, our community. Now, 
I didn't really see that there was a big need for us to go beyond our customer base, at least initially, because there's so many wonderful client and customer success communities out there, right? You have Gain, Grow, Retain, which is actually part of Higher Logic, Vanilla Forums, um, and others. And so for us, um, you know, right now, the time was to create something that our customers would benefit from. The next thing was thinking about who their ICP is. Um, Right, just like you're evaluating other softwares, it's interesting for you to maybe see are other companies that look like you that have similar needs at similar stages, how are they using it? Right. And so is this platform designing features and functionality for companies like me? Um, and so this was important for us, right? I didn't need a community platform that was targeting enterprise B2C. That's not who we are. Um, and so while they might have similar functionality and things that we'd be able to take advantage of, as I think about being a partner with any vendor that we select, it's that long-term sustainability and making sure that we are going to grow together in the same direction. So I wanted to make sure that whoever we selected had customers that looked like us that had the same needs. Obviously, cost comes into play. Um, there are some solutions that we looked at that just weren't uh, financially viable for us, right? Maybe they're too expensive, um, outside, you know, maybe wanted too long of a commitment, right? There's all these things to consider. Um, so cost, obviously, is something that everyone's going to have to weigh in because you all have budgets. So do we. So this was something was, does this make sense for us right now financially? And the last thing that we had to consider were resources. Will I have the resources from their end to help support us? Will I have somebody to effectively help me with all these integrations? Will I have an onboarding uh, manager? Will I have a CSM who is committed to our long-term success? Do I have access to technical support? What do their resources look like? I'm, I'm a big self, self-help gal. Um, I don't need a lot of hand-holding. If you can give me access to information, I am happy to go search for it and figure it out on my own. So what do their resources look like? So like I said, this is not all we evaluated by any means, but these were the things that were most critical to us. And so as you're all going through your selection, and I'd be curious to hear for those of you who have launched your platforms, what direction you went and kind of what were the, dri the driving factors there. But for us, we ended up selecting Vanilla Forums. And so far, the feedback from folks internally and for some of our customers who have seen it, um, all very, very excited about it. And seems like so far we've made the right decision. So very happy about that. Now, this is where uh, I've been heads down, super, super busy. Um, this is a snapshot of what our homepage looks like, uh, only a part of our homepage, the top part of our homepage in our community. So we have branded our, our community, CS Connect, and it's the customer community for client success, where we are connecting customers, building relationships, sharing knowledge, and driving outcomes. Um, so to give you some insight into this, right, like you'll look at our top nav, we're very focused on the discussion forums, we've created some really thoughtful categories to help organize our content, we are launching with some groups there as well to have different cohorts of individuals at our companies, our customers companies rather, um, really start to build and, and formulate those relationships, private events that will be available for them. So we're starting with two different groups here. One is for our leaders, one is for admins, um, but lots and lots of great information in here. Even all of these webinars that we do, um, we'll now be putting some content and having conversations in there to continue kind of this CS, uh, CS bootcamp conversations as well. So as I was building this, and I'm sure for many of you who have deployed software before, you know that this is no easy feat. Um, I think maybe outside of like Calendly, um, some of the software requires hands-on work that we have to do. And so the first thing I had to do was map out our content strategy. You know, one of the biggest components of our community was figuring out how do we want to organize content? We don't want to have a separate category for each part of our platform. We want to make sure that we're facilitating conversations in the right manner. We're helping drive people in ways that will keep information organized and accessible. So we just spent a lot of time trying to figure out, okay, well, what is our content strategy? Because this ultimately will house all the information that we're pumping out into the community and that our members are contributing to. The second thing, designing all the elements. Everything you see here, I designed. 
Turns out I'm a fantastic web designer. Me and Canva cannot be stopped. Um, and so I had to go design all of the elements, right? Every icon, every badge, every little thing in the platform, we had to go and create. Now, obviously super cool that they have defaults for everything, but when you're building something that is an extension of your brand, you really want it to represent your brand. And so it was really important that we go and make sure that this looked and felt like client success. We want our customers who are coming in here to feel like they are navigating our website and coming into just another environment that feels like their home. And so this was something we put a lot of work into. Hopefully you guys think it's not horrible looking, um, but we ran with this as our design, at least as a V1, and we're really excited about that. The next thing I had to focus on was writing out all of our community guidelines. We needed to be very thoughtful about what were the rules of engagement in our platform, right? In our community, what does it look like for each of our end users? What are the expectations that we have for them? What are the things that we will not allow or permit? Right? We want to create a safe, inclusive space for everyone to share ideas and for people to feel like they can contribute in ways that maybe other communities do not facilitate. And so we are very thoughtful about what those guidelines look like and including levels of specificity that would help make sure that we've addressed almost everything. So our guidelines are pretty extensive and hope to speak to and address any questions or concerns our customers will have coming in. The next thing we had to do is configure all the permissions, right? Every different user of our, our community platform is gonna have different level of permissions, right? Admins, they're gonna be able to do all kinds of things. Um, you know, there's, there's different lo levels of those admins, um, right? Like I don't want everyone in my team to be able to go and reconfigure the platform, but I want them to be able to have controls and see backend information and, and feel like they can control some of what's happening here because this is a, a this is a client success initiative. This is not a Christie initiative. So I need to make sure that the right people have the right access to do the right things. But then also, right, there's certain parts of our, our content areas where we wanted to make sure certain things were enabled or disabled. Um, for example, we've got um, certain events, things like that in certain areas where we don't want people posting outside of events. This is really something that we wanted to control in certain categories, but things like job boards. We do have a job board in here. We want any of our customers to feel like they can come and post jobs. Um, we do have polling as a functionality. Well, who has access to create polls? We don't want this to be a flurry like LinkedIn. Remember when everyone realized that polls got higher visibility through the LinkedIn algorithm. And then every time you logged into LinkedIn, you saw a poll. Well, we wanted to make sure we were controlling things like that. So we had to think about that end user experience throughout all of those different elements and really weigh out the pros and cons of what we were enabling people to do once they were in. And last thing is adjust settings, um, right? So this is how do we want things to look? Where do we want things to live? The cool thing about higher logic is that everything was configurable. Um, you know, whether I wanted carousels or widgets or list views or grid views, um, that was really interesting to me, right? Because I didn't spend a lot of time thinking through that initially when I came into this project. I'm like, okay, well, this will just all make sense. It's very modular, but I had options. I had endless options. And so everything needed to be thought out and like I said, this is V1. We might decide to change things, modify, but for right now, the way that we've laid it out, highly configurable. And we're really, I think, pleased with that outcome of how we've laid everything out for our customers. So this is just a few things that I had to tackle with this platform build. Like I said, this has been an ongoing project for many, many weeks where we've just been heads down, testing, making sure that things made sense, they looked a certain way, and they really represented client success in our community the best way possible. All right, so now as we're getting ready for our launch, I wanna share with you guys a little bit of what we put together to facilitate this. Um, now, again, I, I won't be able to have every single detail here because I'm only given 60 minutes. <laughs> so in 60 minutes, what I can share with you is first thing was internal enable enablement. Um, I've had several conversations, especially with my organization, who's the CX org, to make sure that they understand how to log in, how to set up their profiles, how to engage with content, um, all the different views that we have as admins on the back end. How do we want to act as administrators? Um, we've got different profiles set up to be community admins as opposed to us as individuals in the business. 
And I wanted them to understand how they're expected to contribute to this. Um, internal enablement, I will tell you, is not done. Uh, I did focus on my team first because they're going to be the ones that are in there for the soft launch. And so I really wanted to make sure that everyone understood how to use it. Now, I will say it's pretty intuitive. Uh, there was nothing here that was earth shattering or so complicated or so complex that they couldn't figure it out on their own. But obviously, we want to, to lead out and make sure that we were walking them through this effectively. The second thing we did is we prepared for a soft launch. So what we did was our customer success team nominated a bunch of their customers and contacts in those organizations that they thought would be best suited to participate in a beta program. Now, we're calling this our founding members program. As a founding member, our hope and expectation here is that not only will they help us by sharing feedback and their thoughts about how we've set everything up and what we've facilitated for them, but that they're also going to help seed content, right? Nobody wants to launch a community day one and be the first person to post a discussion. So we're hoping that this initial cohort of customers will be there to help us start seed content, to facilitate conversations, to comment, to engage, to react. Um, and so that's where we are in terms of like that soft launch program. So we sent out a form to all of these customers who were part of that initial program that they were nominated by their CSMs. And the form basically captured some information, but really it provided them with a, a visible document that said, here are the expectations for you as a founding member. Now, we understand that not all of our customers would have the time and the bandwidth to do this. And so we said, we completely get it, right? If you're super busy and you don't have time, don't worry about it. Maybe this program's not for you. When we go live, you'll have access. You'll enjoy it then. Um, but we wanted to make sure that everyone understood that as a founding member, you're a part of our internal launch. This, this really helped um, facilitating and designing and developing content initially. So we wanted to make sure that they were really reading through that, taking it seriously, and then opting in. The next area of focus for us is around that initial content creation. Like I said, this founding members group, along with the client success team, we want to help start to feed and seed content. Um, start initial conversations, get people commenting, reacting, responding, uploading videos, uploading photos, right? Really helping us to have that first level of content. So when everyone in our customer community joins, they'll be welcomed with a wealth of information and data and will feel eager to contribute to conversations that have already initiated or to start their own. Now, as we start to do that, we're going to be really focused on an audit and review process. This is going to help us to understand where are folks getting stuck? Are, are the features and functionality? Do we set up and configure everything the right way? How are people doing with you know, providing and adding content. What is that search telling us, right? That at the beginning, at the top of the screenshot, you may have seen, we have a search bar. I wanna see like, what are people searching for? Because that might help us understand that they're not finding the content easily and they're searching for it. Um, do we need to start to elevate and show certain content in certain places, right? So we're gonna learn a lot with this initial launch and we wanna make sure that we're using that information to make any changes um, and modifications that we need to before we go into our full launch, which like I said, that will be March 20th. And so at that point, we'll be rolling out the community platform to all of our customers to use. Um, the cool thing about what we've set up here and how we've set it up is that it is through SSO. So all of our customers who already have access to client success, they're going to be able to log directly into the community. They're not going to have to create a new username or a new profile. It really is just going to take what they have in client success and allow them to jump right in. So we're really excited to get to that place. I've got a couple more weeks before we're there, um, but this is what the next couple of weeks will look like for us here at client success. So again, for those of you who have already launched, you probably went through a similar process. If you haven't, when you do get to a place where you are ready to build and launch and roll out your, your, your platform for community, these are going to be things you'll need to consider, right? Your, what does your launch program look like? Now, I'll tell you, um, our internal documentation is a lot more comprehensive than this slide, although I'm sure everyone internally would prefer a visual that looked like this. Keep it a little simpler. <laughs> All right. Um, so obviously, like I talked about, right, beyond the 90 days, what does the future for our community look like and how are we thinking about that? Now, for many of you who mentioned earlier, 
that you launched in late 2022, or even you're relaunching. I saw a lot of relaunches, which I thought was really cool. Um, I'm interested to hear what a relaunch looks like for some of you if you're repurposing your community, um, or if you started a community for support and now you're expanding it beyond. Would love to hear more of that. But for us, it's going to be those continued integrations, right? How how can we think about really taking what we have and making it stronger and better for us, whether that be, again, more technology that we have in our tech stack going into community or taking within in community and pumping that out into other tools in our tech stack. Identifying top contributors. This is going to be a big thing for us. Um, I'm really, listen, we we love our customers here at Client Success. I know most companies say they love their customers. Um, I am a customer of Client Success, right? I use our platform every day. But I want to find those people that are our top contributors, and we want to find ways to thank them, appreciate them, and recognize them. And so this is going to be something that we're really focused on for that V2. So post that initial launch, uh, when we roll it out to everybody, is really starting to hone in on who are the top folks that are helping us make this a success, and how do we create mutually beneficial programs to amplify their voices increase the opportunities and visibility they have, and really, like I said, celebrate them. The next thing is the platform add-ons. Like I said, Higher Logic had a lot of different modules and things that we can add. Um, it was really cool display of, of creative innovation. We didn't need everything day one. Um, and I'm definitely not interested in biting off more than I can chew. So I was very thoughtful about just adding in whatever we needed to facilitate a strong initial launch. But I know that I'll want to go back, right? I'm sure I'll get feedback from customers. Hey, it'd be really cool if we could do this or have you thought about that? And I wanna make sure that we are considering the feedback that we're receiving and then using that to help drive what the additional add-ons will look like. And the last thing is reporting and performance, um, right? You can't manage what you can't measure. And so the data here will be really, really important. Um, and even as you guys are, are selecting platforms, if you haven't already picked your community platform, this is something that I think is really critical, especially if you are a customer success team looking to bring community on, is making sure that you have the right analytics available. Um, Higher Logic definitely gave us all of the insights uh, with their data to help us understand how our customers were engaging with content, posting content, what usage and adoption would look like long term. And we are actually going to be taking that data at some point and integrating it into client success so we can consider that for our health scores, right? When we think about engagement, I think historically, customer success has been really focused on engagement looking like a one-to-one -one engagement, right? CSM met with customer, great, engaged. Executive met with executive, great, that's an engagement. We're not thinking about it that way any longer. Um, engagement isn't just a one-to-one -one, uh, action or activity. We're thinking about how our customers are engaging with our brand. And community is a big part of this right? How they're engaging with our content, how they're engaging with other folks in the community. And we know that customers who are really, really engaged here are probably likely getting more value. We want to be able to really start to do some comparisons here, like customers that are really active in community. Are they using and adopting client success in a different way, right? So we want to start to identify correlation and causation between customers engagement in community and overarching partnership outcomes. So reporting and performance is going to be really key once we get some of that foundational data. Okay, now I keep skipping ahead today. Um, all right, so I always leave you guys with a few things um, to think about. Today isn't things to avoid. That's usually what I do is I give you my list of like, hey, 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 don't do these things. Today, it's five reasons to consider community. So if you did not raise your hand to say, I've already built my community, we're relaunching our community, or we're, we're definitely doing it this year, I want you to think about these things. One, this enables your brand to engage with customers at scale. If you are a customer success team that still believes that your customers are your customers, right? If I'm a CSM and I support customer A, that's my customer, false. That is a customer of your company. And you want everyone in your company to be able to build relationships and partner together really strategically. And so I will tell you, this facilitates that reached engagement. I can't wait for my product team to have direct access to my customers. I can't wait for my sales team to be able to check back in on customers that they brought on to see how things are go doing. I can't wait to have my customers connect with one another. So this will help facilitate that level of engagement. 
Two, facilitates ongoing knowledge, sharing, and learning. We should all be of the mindset that we never stop learning. Nobody knows everything about anything. And so this is a hopefully a resource that will help continue to facilitate the growth and learning for our customer base. We're really excited to make sure that everyone who is a customer of client success understands how to maximize client success. Three, facilitate facilitates relationship building. Now I will tell you, I try my best. I am probably very unsuccessful. I try my best to build relationships with as many of our customers as possible. It is impossible for me to do that at scale. Um, I am so excited to be able to reach out and connect with our customers and to be able to have that ongoing dialogue and to share stories and anecdotes and hear what they're talking about. If you are a brand that is committed to relationship development, you should be committed to community. Four, all customers are going to benefit from this, right? I know that there's a lot of companies who are thinking about community to facilitate a tech touch or a low touch model. Community serves everyone. So if you're thinking about this and you've really designed it for a certain cohort of your customers, trust me, even your biggest customers, if you do this right, if you do it well, everyone benefits. So don't really, don't, don't think about community through the lens of all oh, my small customers and scale and one to many, everyone benefits. So build your community for everyone. And lastly, I just want to, I am not the first one to say this. Hopefully you guys have seen other communities, but brands have had success connecting with their customers through their, through communities for years. This is not new. We are not new. We are not innovative. Communities have been around four years, driving tremendous success for their customers. Customer success should be leveraging this. And listen, if you've got an army of resources in your company and maybe community lives in marketing or it lives somewhere else, that's cool. But if you are a customer success leader, you better get on board. It better be part of your initiatives. You better figure out how you and your team can use it effectively because I'm telling you at the end of the day, if you do it, you will be successful. So hopefully, if you were not considering community, um, hopefully you will after today's presentation. I'm excited to hear more of your success stories, more of your learnings, um, as I'll be reaching out to folks to just really continue to learn myself as a leader and an ambassador of community to see what best practices and what best community looks like out there. So super excited to continue the conversations and happy to open it up to Q&A. All right, great job, Christy. Super, super exciting to see the uh, the insights and and the uh, engagement online. We do have some questions for the remaining mi minutes. One is Thad had a question about um, connecting ROI from the community and the the difficulty of drawing a line between um, community engagement and expansion, renewal, upsell, and stuff like that. Any any thoughts uh, for for that and others about how about measuring or, or being able to to identify the true ROI of community? Well, this is where I said the integrations component would be so so important. Is we're going to be able to take all the customer engagement data from the community and eventually put it into client success. And this is where being able to see that in a health score or being able to see those metrics alongside of all of your other customer metrics. This is where those correlations can really start to influence how you communicate about that ROI. So what I'd love to be able to see is that customers who are active in community, who are posting discussions and commenting, they have an increased uh, usage and adoption in our platform. And then hopefully that results in retention and uh, growth. So I don't think that it can be isolated by just looking at those metrics and saying like, oh, here's the ROI. This is where you've gotta be able to string all of that data together to tell a cohesive story. Yeah, great, great answer. I think one other area that, that isn't touched on a lot is um, on the uh, ROI from a um, support question deflection standpoint. Yes. So engaging your community to help answer questions and drive best practices with with uh, from customer to customer um, can be a great one so that they don't necessarily need to go to support. They can answer questions across the community. They can share ideas and best practices together and um and that helps you scale and you know saves it maybe even from a cost savings perspective yeah that's a great one dave and i know our support team is super excited for community yeah. um because we're actually learning a lot about what our customers are struggling with and we feel like we'll be able to create more content to help with education enablement or even drive product innovation based off of what our customers are needing yeah 
No, that's great. Um, the next question from Antonia, I hopefully I, I said that wrong. When you have a small customer base and they only, I guess the question, the heart of the question is, how do you ensure that the customers are not just reading your post, but they're contributing um, and, and that they're providing value in the community? Because I think the key to any community, whether it be a, um, is, is the community eventually almost takes over mm -hmm. itself and it, and it becomes a self-sustaining. So any suggestions on how to, how do you drive that, um, that interaction from the community to the post so that you're, so that you're internally aren't having to manage and post everything. Any thoughts there? Um, I haven't, I haven't nailed that yet because I haven't had to <laughs> solve that problem yet. And I, have a gut feeling based off of my knowledge of the customer success community that we won't have that problem. Yeah. I don't know that I have a good answer there, Dave. Do, no. you, do you have any thoughts no. on there? I, I kind of want to watch and see what happens and then try to figure out what we need to tackle. But what are your thoughts? Um, I think it's, I think the key thing is early on having the right early adopters who love to engage and love to, and, and that sometimes is a personality. Some people love to create content and share other people like to consume. And I think it's for, for me, it's about just having patience of really trying to create uh, the value drivers for people to come to the community and as they and um, encourage others to do so. And as they do, as they get value, they'll come back and, and start to contribute. So one, I think it's patience Two, it's it's just being early on the initial investment to uh, create a valuable um, a valuable reason to come and engage and, and contribute. So I like Brian's comment here. He left a comment for us as the host yeah. and panelist, but he said, one thing moderators can do is link the users to right answers. So users who might know the answer tagging them. And so oh, that is yeah. something that I know Higher Logic does have the ability to do is you can tag other members of the community. So um, I hadn't thought about that. Like I said, not right. a problem I've had to solve yet, but I love that idea. Excellent, excellent um, uh, suggestion, Brian. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the next one is, this is just a, a tactical question for us, is the, is the community included in our subscription or is it an add-on that customers have to buy into? Oh, that is a great question. Ours is included. Um, we are looking to help continue to educate and uplift and connect our customers. And so um, not to say that there wouldn't be a different plan or strategy in the future, but right now it is included. It's part of um, part of our platform subscription. Yeah, and then uh, Katie has a question that I think is it can be a common challenge. Uh, so Katie is saying that she she's tried to um, create a community and her particular space. It doesn't feel like the professionals like to sh to to come and share information, and wondering like what do I do if I have very minimal participation and that that is a challenge and that can be can discouraging. Any any thoughts there? Oh God, again. Uh... Not something I tackled. I will, I'll be honest with you, like um, the three other companies where I've been a part of a community that's been deployed, like I said, this is the first time I own it under my remit, but previously, um, and we served interesting industries, right? Like one of them was IT professionals where interestingly enough, they don't want to do a lot of live things, not a lot of webinars, not a lot of events, but they are a community who has no problem typing and exchanging ideas and learnings written. Um, and so I, you know, I don't know that I've run into a community yet that is just like not interested in that shared learning experience. I don't know, Dave. Only thought I would have is just to, um, is to, is again, um, experiment a lot of different types of content and community is, there's a lot of different types of community. There could be, um, um, community virtual communities where you you connect online through webinars or, or uh, virtual town hall I don't know not town halls not the right but round tables or the office yeah hours. round tables yeah. and those types of things some is content some of it's um, uh, local events and I guess I would consider the the definition of community pretty broad it's not just an online um, yeah. a knowledge sharing community that you could do it and I would just continue to to uh, experiment and see if something connects with your space. And at the end of the day, just like everything that you do in business, you may find that in your space, the community isn't worth the investment and you might look to invest in your customers in different ways, um, unfortunately. It, um, and and that's that would be my response. So hopefully- I would also, helpful. I would say before you get down uh, to the point where you're launching a community, make sure it's something your customers are gonna want and get value yeah. from. 
right? Like we didn't, we didn't guess. We heard from enough of our customers that they would love for us to do this. They've been asking for for a long time, ways to connect, share more information. They were shocked that we didn't already have one. And so for us, we knew that this would be something of value to them coming into it. I would say that before you launch a community, you should probably assess whether this is something your customers would benefit from. Agreed. I like Katie's comments and Denise, Katie said that, um, you know, she's found that the way to do it is kind of make things fun um, that maybe don't have anything to do with your particular space, that yeah. maybe just a, a forum initially to, to make connections. And then from those connections, maybe take it from there. Denise also said, create smaller user groups within the community that are tar targeted to different topics or departments or different features yeah. or expertise. I think one of the thing that people love is they just love from a vendor is that they give more than software. So I think there's a lot of people who just love connection. And so maybe that's, I think Denise's idea is great is like, how do I create these smaller connections around expertise around um, other things that may not be directly tied to your software, but you're providing another value add to your customers that they value and is another reason why they appreciate you as a partner. So those are some ideas. Hopefully that gives you all a great uh, framework uh, um, to build your community to start from scratch or to refine or build upon it. Um, we are uh, super uh, grateful for you to, to, get, to give us, share your time with us. Um, this is the end of this month's series, uh, bootcamp series, but watch for us is I think in May, right, Christy? Is it May? Uh, yeah, May, yes. May will be the next one. Um, if you have ideas, I mean, we always, again, let, you know, in the community, we want to contribute. We want to continue to do other types of webinars. If you have ideas for great webinar topics or speakers that you would like us to host and, and, and uh, have, please send us an, an email at marketing at clientsuccess.com. Again, uh, different topics that you'd like us to address or different speakers you'd like us to, um, to host. If you have those ideas, send it to marketing at clientsuccess.com. We'll, we'll take a look and see if we can tee those up over the coming weeks. But uh, otherwise, thanks, Christy, so much for all that you do. Uh, everybody loves the, uh, uh, your, your leadership. We're biased, obviously, um, <laughs> the great leadership that you provide here. But we're grateful for all that you share to the community. Thanks to all of our customers on the, on the line and all of our friends just in the global customer success community. Thanks for joining us. Uh, from Christy and Dave, we, we, we wish you all the best this, this week and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much. See you, everybody.